Hi guys, this is Edwards and welcome to a new video tutorial series where we're going to be creating the classic snake game in Godot. I am really excited about this series because I had a lot of fun creating this game with the new version of Godot 4. Now, it has been a while since I made a video and it makes me really happy to see how the engine has improved so much over time. As you can see, this game has pretty much everything we can expect from a snake game. We're going to make the snake respond to the user input with an expected behavior. We're going to be keeping track of the score as well as creating a nice and simple interface and implementing swing animation. And the code for this project is something I am really excited about showing because it is clean and easy to understand. And you're going to be learning quite a lot. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so already in the project manager, let's go ahead and create a new project. Let's name it a snake game. And let's also hit on create folder so that it creates a folder for us that will contain all the files. Let's open it up. All right, so the first thing I will do is to rearrange the panels because I like the scene view on the left and everything else on the right. So I'm going to move the inspector to the top right as well as the node panel. And the same thing for the history panel. I'm going to now place the scene and the import panel to this position. And the file system right below them. And we're going to be making a 2D game. So let's get the 2D view. Now, we're going to need only a couple of files for this game. So let's create three folders, one named scenes, another named scripts, and a last one named fonts. And the only two files that we will need to import are the icon and the font. So I'm just going to drag and drop them into the file system panel. I'll move the font file into the font folder. And I'm going to delete the SVG icon that comes by default. Let's now go to the project settings. And in here, I'm going to set the icon to be the image we just imported. Click on open. And under the window settings, let's set the viewport width to 800 and the viewport height to 480. Now, this is quite enough for our pixel-like game, but for the window size, it'll be quite small. So in order to scale it up, we just need to toggle advanced settings and set the window width override to 4 times 800 and the window height override to 4 times 480. Then under the stretch, we are going to set the mode to viewport. In having this configuration, it's going to scale the game view to be 4 times bigger. And it's also worth noting that depending on your actual screen size, you might want to set the override to be only 2 or 3 times the viewport. In my case, this is a value that looks good. I am going to close this panel and if we zoom in, we can see that we have our viewport here. Now, after all that setup, I want to create two global nodes that will hold a few values like the score, size of the grid, and the colors we will be using. And by making those nodes global, you'll have easy access to those values from everywhere. So in the script folder, I'm going to create a new script, set the template to empty, and name it game. Hit create, let's open it up. And in here, we're going to create a constant name, grid size, which is going to be equals to a vector 2 with 800 as x and 480 as y, which are the viewport's values. Now, this column symbol I added before the equal sign tells the engine that I want this variable to be typed as whatever I'm setting the equals to. In this case, a vector 2. This is just a short form for writing the type and then the value, like so. I'll put it back in the short form and let's add another constant named cell size equals to a vector 2 with 32 on x and y as well. Now, something that will come handy later on is to know the amount of cells we have horizontally and vertically based on these values. So I'm going to declare a variable named cells amount equals to a vector 2. The x value will set it to the grid size that's x 
divided by the cell size, that's x. By doing this division, we can know how many cells the grid can take horizontally. And for the y axis, we'll set it to the grid size, that's y, divided by cell size, that's y. We can already know those values by ourselves by doing the division, but if later we want to change the size of the grid or how big the cells are, the variable is going to be consistent with those changes. Let's save the script. And in order to make them global, we just need to head to the project settings and in the auto lob tab, select the path of the game script. I will leave the name of the node as game and click on add. Let's create another script for the colors and save it in the scripts folder as color.gd. Hit create, and in here we are going to have the following constant colors that I'm going to paste. So it'll be white for the background, black for the UI, gray for the lines, the blue ones are going to be for the snake, and the red one for when it gets hit. Now this script doesn't need to extend any node since it won't have any functions related to a node, it will just hold these values. So instead of adding it as a global node, I'm just going to give it a class name of colors. This way we can have an easy access to this constant without creating an instance. Let's save the script. Now after all that, let's head to the 2D view. And the next thing we need to do now is to draw the grid. So in the scene panel, as a root node, I'll create a 2D scene, which is going to add a node 2D node for us. I'm going to rename it word and also add a node to the node to it and rename it grid. Let's add a script to it and save it in the script folder as grid.gd. Hit create. I'm going to remove the comments and in order to draw something, we need to do it in the draw function. So down here, I'm going to add the draw function which doesn't return anything. That is what the arrow means. It indicates the return type of the function. We can also add that on these other functions too. So the first thing we will draw is the background. So let's call the draw rectangle function and pass a rectangle to D and the color starts white. This colors word is the class name we previously declared. Now the rectangle position is going to be at 0, 0, which is the top left corner, and the size is going to be game that grid size that x for the width and game that grid size that y for the height. Let's see if this works. I will try to run the project and it is asking us to select a main scene. Let's select the current one and save it in the scene folder as word.tscn. And we can see that the white background is being drawn with the color we defined. We are going to now draw the vertical lines. And in order to do so, we are going to loop through the amount of cells we have horizontally. So let's create a for loop. So that will be for i in game that sales amount that x. So if the amount of horizontal cells is 25, i is going to start with 0 and end with 24. Now, in order to draw a line, we need to indicate from what position to what position. So let's declare a variable name from and set it equals to a vector to. Now, since the from position is going from the top left to the top right, its x axis is going to be i and its y axis is going to be zero. Now, this is only going to give us values like zero, one, two, three, four, five. So we need to multiply that by game that cell size that x. So it will give us values like 0, 32, 64, 96, 128, and so on. Let's create another variable named 2 equals to a vector 2. And because we are drawing a straight vertical line, the x value is going to be the same as from that x. And the y value is going to be at the very bottom of the grid. So it will be game that with size that y. Now that we have defined the from and the to position, we can call the draw line function and pass from as from and to as to. 
and for the color we will pass colors that's gray let's run the scene and there we have our vertical lines okay so we now need to do this for the horizontal lines let me just add a comment here and we're going to do something similar to what we did before for i in game that sells amount that's why let's create a variable name from equals to a vector 2 with 0 as x because they are all going to be all the way to the left and because the vertical position is the one that's going to be changing we'll set it equals to game that sell size that's y multiplied by i let's declare the two variable equals to a vector 2 for x we'll pass game that grid size that x and for y from that y because we want the line to be straight let's call the draw line function with from as from to as to and color that gray as the line's color let's give it a try and there we go now we have our grid fully created and looking good all right so now let's focus on creating the snake and making it move and before getting into it i will explain a few concepts we will be doing so when it comes to the snake what we're actually going to be handling are these little blocks which i call mini snakes so each one of them is a mini snake including the one in the front which is the head and the only thing a mini snake does is to hold a few values which are the current position the size and the color and that's it this is going to be a really simple script we don't even need a node for that now when it comes to the snake itself we will be using a node with the script we do need a node here because the snake is the one that is going to be drawing all the mini snakes and only a node to the node is able to draw so the snake is going to keep track of all of the mini snakes it's going to draw them and it's also going to be listening to players input okay so back to the editor in the script view let's click on file new script i will choose the empty template and save it in the script folder as mini snake that's gd So we don't need this node to extend anything since it won't be attached to any node. But I'm going to give it a class name of mini snake. Having this class name is going to become really handy later on when we want to type variables as mini snake. So let's add a few properties here. Let's declare a variable name current position equals to a vector 2. Another variable name size equals to a vector 2 as well. And the last one is going to be the color, which is going to be equals to a color. Now, let's also add a function that will help us in the drawing later. Let's create a function named getRectangle, which is going to return a rectangle too. And in here, we'll return a new rectangle too with current position as position and size as the size. And this is going to be it for now here. Let's now create the snake itself. I'm going to add a child node to the wall node. It's going to be a node to the node. And I'm going to rename it snake. Let's attach a script to it and save it in the scripts folder as snake.gd. I'm going to remove these comments. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is to define the head, which is a mini snake that is going to be leading the other ones or the tail. So I'm going to create a variable named head equals to mini snake that new. And this is the reason why I added the mini snake class name here, because otherwise we'll have to do the following. We'll have to preload the script, which just makes it a little harder to read and not as convenient in my opinion. So let's just have it like this. Now, in the ready function, we're going to set the head size equals to game that cell size. And the head's color equals to colors that blue dark. Down here, let's add the draw function. And in here, we're going to draw a rectangle and pass head that gets rectangle which is the function we created before in the mini snake script and as the color pass head that color now later on we're going to be moving the head so in order to make sure that the snake gets redrawn on every frame in the process function 
you are going to call the query draw function. Let's run the project. And there we have it. We have the head being drawn at the top left. All right, guys, this is going to be it for this video. I don't want to make it too long. I'll see you on the next video where we're going to be adding movement and a few other things. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. And until next time, see you later. Good.